All right, fellas. So someone had to address this. And I'm going to do it for you. In true brute to force fashion. Do you guys understand that bug man, bug man might genuinely be the greatest metaphor to ever grace your mental palate? It's the greatest metaphor in the entire American lexicon, for sure, for sure, because it perfectly describes, look, let me tell you something. I, I am absolutely intrigued by losers. The loser mentality is so goddamn fascinating when you really deconstruct all the elements that come into play to, to create it. Like why some people just legitimately never fucking win, ever. There's nothing more fucking intriguing than picking that apart and polishing those bones and trying to figure out what the, like what, why is your worldview so fucked up? Why are your mental paradigms so fucking fucked up. So let me tell you something. You know how you'll see an army of ants, literal fucking ants, just like randomly you'll see an ant like carrying a leaf, just carrying a fucking leaf. And look, I'm sure there's some fucking divine reason in the, in the grand symphony and orchestration of life, I'm sure there's a fucking some sort of divine purpose for it. But you'll stand there and you'll watch an ant carry a fucking leaf and then just drop it in the middle of the fucking sidewalk and just walk away. And you're just like, what is this dumb motherfucker doing? Humans are no different. Humans are no different. When you are terrified to really move the needle in life, like really do the things that are actually fucking breaking barriers, breaking boundaries. It's you will literally invent problems that are not fucking real. And you'll generate a massive amount of rush, borderline adrenaline from accomplishing nothing. There are 90% of human beings, all they do on a daily basis is rotate and move things around and rearrange things for no reason whatsoever. Musical chairs, just literally moving things around, rearranging shit for zero fucking purpose, reason, rhyme or reason. And you think that you've accomplished something. Let me tell you something. When you are genuinely on some kind of mission or obsessed, I promise you the things that will re repulse you the most are the menial, trivial tasks. Because you just, when, when you're actually a, trying to achieve something that's grand, it's really fucking disgusting to have any kind of interruption to do menial or trivial fucking tasks. Yet, we live in a world where there's a lot of people who legitimately think that if they bring up the trash cans from the driveway and they fucking put the cups back in the cupboard and this chair is a little bit out of place and they fucking shove the chair back under the table and they fucking fold their shirts and put them away in the drawers, that they've literally won the day. You're killing it. You're killing it, buddy. You got all your fucking room is, is fucking, it's immaculate. It's gorgeous. And you think, just like a fucking ant, that dragging that leaf across the fucking crack in the fucking sidewalk and dumping it off, that you just fucking accomplished something fucking majestic. I, I can't even put into words how irrelevant 99% of this shit is. And then you look at the people who are losing in every department of life and you're like, bro, 
the things that you obsess on and harp on and dwell on and focus on are so unbelievably, profoundly, malignantly, spectacularly fucking stupid that it's, it's, it's really just boggles your mind. You're like, how do, how did you convince yourself that this is moving the needle? That this is legitimately making your life better because you ran errands and took your fucking shit to the dry cleaners and you got to pick it up at 2 PM. The fuck is going on here with this mindset? You know what I mean? It's like, I've always told you guys that if you looked behind the scenes of high functioning people, it really would appear like they are the most dysfunctional motherfuckers on planet earth. Their, their environment, their life is in such disarray because when you're legitimately in the saddle and you have legitimate pressure to perform at a high level, it's like, I've always said, picking up that fucking t-shirt or throwing your socks in the fucking dirty laundry hamper literally feels like you're, you're deadlifting 600 pounds. It just, it just takes the life out of you because it's just so fucking existentially mundane. It's so mundane. It's so purposeless. It's so meaningless. It's so minute. It's so trivial. It's nasty. It's nasty. But there's people who make a complete fucking living out of this. It kind of reminds me of the guy who truly it's like when you try so hard not to fuck things up in life your whole modest operandi is just you're trying not to be a fuck up you're trying to be perfect you're trying to be so meticulous and detailed and orderly and organized those guys literally fuck everything up you ever notice this you ever notice the guy who literally goes out of his way and tries with all his might to never make mistakes just fucks up left and right and gets berated and gets badgered and fucking he's got bosses always chewing him out and he just can't understand why the reality that he's created in his head doesn't actually manifest in the real world. He like gets the opposite result of everything he's trying to do. I see this shit over and over and over again. A guy at some fucking bullshit job that has, that's a dead end, it's a cul-de-sac, it's never really going to go anywhere, but when he's off the job, he fucking brushes up on all the fucking literature and he fucking reads all this, these pamphlets and fucking leaflets and tries to just get so fucking smart so he can come back the next day and make his boss proud and show him that he's, he's learning outside the job, he's trying to do his best. That guy literally gets fired after like three days. He just gets, he just gets canned because he doesn't have the aptitude. The aptitude's not there and he doesn't pick up things quickly. And he's just overcompensating by thinking that if he just tries to, it's like, dude, it, it really is insane. It really is insane how people will try to sprinkle gold flakes on shit. It's all you're doing. You're basically just putting gold flakes on, on literal fucking feces thinking that you're doing a fucking great job. It's like when you're really, really, really focused on a goal, you can't imagine how much shit really does fall to the wayside. Like a lot of little, 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 little problems that eat at you stack up because you just don't have the mental bandwidth or care to address them. And I think that's why a lot of people run into these stumbling blocks and actually get super thrown off course because the little things that stack up do 100% cause some stress. And it's funny because everyone thinks that the stress, the high impact stress comes from being in the actual saddle itself and taking the big shots. Believe it or not, that's actually not where the bulk of the stress comes from. The bulk of the stress comes from when you are taking the big shots and you are in the saddle and you're attacking a lofty goal, the stress comes from all the things on the periphery 
that you actually have to let die because they're going to stack up on you because you simply, as a, as a human being, you don't have the mental bandwidth to deal with all the nonsense and all the rigmarole. And that shit definitely does eat at you. But stress tolerance is being able to block that shit out. Because as I've always said, once you win, you can go back and clean up, clean up all the mess. But you got to win first. You got to win first. And none of these guys are winning anything. And they're on this fucking hamster wheel of just constantly rearranging furniture. And, t- and being tidy and neat and organizing. You know what I mean? It's like a guy doesn't even have a business, but he's at a fucking shopping supply store looking for fucking three ring binders, color coded fucking mechanisms so he can fucking file his fucking documents in a manila envelope. But he's got no fucking documents to fill the envelope. There's no invoices being paid. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Reminds me of the motherfucker who don't even have a product, but he's fucking looking for a graphic designer to get the most badass logo in some kind of like gothic font because he thinks it's badass to have the fucking logo. And he thinks that if he buys the logo, it's going to give him some fucking crazy otherworldly inspiration to start taking action. It's like, brother, you don't even have a business. The fuck you worried about a logo for? Just constantly focusing on all the wrong things in life. That's really what it all boils down to. That's, that's the gulf between winners and losers. Like the, 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 the real chasm comes from just focusing on all the wrong fucking things in life. And it will blow your mind. It will blow the top of your cranium off if you have achieved great things in life and then you go and look at someone who can't get out of a rut and you go look at how they spend their time, the things they stress about, the things they worry about, where their mindset is. It's, it's fucking insane. It's fucking insane. I mean, look, uh, a fly, a fucking common house fly is a superior animal to an ant. Ant is like the lowest end species because a fly A lot of motherfuckers don't even realize the utility of a fly. At least a fly is vampiric in nature, right? A a fly, people, most people don't know what the actual utility of a fly is, but these motherfuckers go and cannibalize decomposing organisms. And it's been said, it's been said, and I think some of this is hyperbolic, but the point still remains. It's been said that if flies didn't exist, you would just see the fucking dead corpses of animals littered all over the fucking world. So basically, flies are like burial removal services baked into nature. These motherfuckers are like Paul bearers. They carry the caskets of the dead and ferry them into the afterlife and remove decaying organisms from the fucking soil. Very fucking interesting. At least there's fucking utility there. You know what I mean? When a fly is landing and picking on shit. Ants, like I said, I'm sure they have some fucking divine miraculous order, but I've seen them just fucking carry things and just drop them off somewhere and and bounce. And that's no different than what these fucking optimizing motherfuckers are doing. It's fucking outrageous. The things that fucking people focus on. And... As I just said, if you truly want, and look, there's a flip side to this coin, of course, because I've always told you truth is paradoxical. There does get to a point where you'll go through these extended stints of of letting like these little, little minute things kind of stack up on you. And the stress definitely does get, get under your skin after a while. Like if you don't wash your car for like six months and then you go get a fucking car wash, like that can actually relieve a lot of shit that's, that's been cumbersome things that have been cumbersome and have been weighing you down that can actually provide some massive alleviation after a certain fucking point. But there's motherfuckers who are like washing their car every fucking week because it has to be fucking shiny, but they're broke. 
you're broke and you're polishing your car and you need it waxed and, and you just, you're literally focused on all the wrong fucking things in life because you're afraid, you're terrified to take on the real biggest challenges because to take on life's biggest challenges, you got to be vulnerable and you got to wear your heart on your sleeve and you got to establish, you got to fucking stab your flag into the soil and claim territory. You got to put your chest out there and you got to make your, you, you got to make your desires very well known very well intentioned you know what i'm saying and and look i'm not gonna bash people who work a regular job but i'll tell you something there does come a point there's dudes in their 40s mid 40s late 40s even in their 50s that are literally under the thumb of a boss they have to comport themselves in a certain way they have to be very well mannered they have to literally look like be told what to do by a superior authority. And that's just an extended form of childhood. Because if you're an adult and someone has to tell you what to do to pay you all day, you're, a ch you're, you're literally stuck in childhood. It's some kind of like Peter Pan syndrome. So, the, so my point is the people who never grow up. And I, I use that very loosely because there are, there are flaws with truly growing up as well, but people who never grow up just end up in a constant cycle where they have to be super obedient to authority. You understand where this leads? And that's what happens when you just focus on all the wrong things in life. You're going to be under the behest and you're going to be under the command and you're going to be under the thumb of someone who does focus on all the right things. And the right things are extremely subjective, by the way. It's just about going all in and putting in the blood, sweat, and tears to the one thing that you want to achieve. And that's a very unoptimal state, as we know. I'm going to bring up a fucking question because I, I really want to fucking springboard off this. You guys know exactly what I'm talking about. You've seen these types. And the things that they stress about you, you, you actually literally are just slack jawed sometimes. And you're just like, how is this real? How, how the fuck do you spend all your day worried about, uh, the fact that you're fucking the handicap plaque? You know what I mean? Like these, these are the same type of people who will walk into a building and they'll see a handicap placard here. That's a quarter inch off. And they'll be like, that's against building code two, five, zero seven. We got to call the fucking inspector, like just completely zeroed in on all the fucked up things in life. Notice all the little cracks and flaws in just absolute garbage nonsense. I'm going to bring someone up. Yo, authentic. You're up, buddy. Really? How are Yo. you doing today? I'm good, man. What's up? Man, what was your experience when you went through the uh, depersonalization and nihilism, you know, cause I know that all these, the, the ability to ignore these trivial problems comes from putting them into perspective that nothing matters. So do you have any experience in depersonalization? No, I think it's the opposite. I think actually letting the trivial things fall to the wayside is actually the pipeline to Godhood brother. I think the angels play the trumpets for the motherfuckers who are able to let this shit fall away, bro. Because look, in the modern world, the modern world is inherently nihilistic. Because of, the, of all these man-made structures and constructs, people legitimately are convinced that these, these very small problems have to be solved. And they do not, my friend. They do not. I am a very untidy. Very, very untidy, but I'm clean. You understand the difference? You can be very untidy, but you can still be pristinely clean. I'm a clean motherfucker. My place is clean, but it's not tidy. It's not organized. You know what I mean? I know how to navigate my own mess. I got fucking shirts and socks and fucking clothes strewn out everywhere. If I use a cup, 0% chance I'm putting it back in the fucking right location. Because I have that fire in my belly and I know how absurd it is to exchange and bargain that mental bandwidth for things that don't produce results. You understand? You understand Mass. the difference? So Mass. it's the opposite of nihilism. It's extremely fucking spiritual what I'm saying here, bro. 
This is, this is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the human spirit and having the heart and the capacity to dig super fucking deep and challenge the status quo, which basically tells you that you are a successful adult if all your bills are paid on time and your fucking living space is organized. There's much more to life than this, my man. There's much more out there to be sought. There's much more out there to be rewarded. Much more, much, much, much more. So I'm offering you the opposite perspective, but anyway, I appreciate it. Thank you. El Waro. Yo, El Waro, and then we'll take Reds next. What's up, bro? Yo, can you hear me all right, bro? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I almost, I'm driving, I almost crashed over here, bro. Um, It's crazy, bro, that what the, the things you're saying, I think uh, it, it it all, it almost goes into the same lane of uh, when you said about the people that uh, are like only focused on their health and on their fucking uh, diet and shit like that. I mean, it all comes down to what you've been saying and talking about that leaning into your nature and your mission. Because at the end of the day, like what you just mentioned about the cup, like what like how does that change anything in the big picture like you know what i mean exactly bro it's exactly my point how does bringing up the trash bins at (laughs) right on time how does that fucking do a goddamn thing because here's the deal let me let me go further with this people who lack internal organization need the cope of external organization like i am very internally organized and centered even though i have a chaotic mind my internal structure is really on point. So I can live in the most chaotic of environments. I can have music blaring. I can fucking have absolute fucking chaos and raucous noises clinging and fucking clanging. I can have workers outside drilling and fucking hammering nails. Guess what? If I still need to type up a fucking tweet or an email or fucking have a business call, it's going to happen. My environment ain't fucking destabilizing me. So people who lack that internal confidence and don't have that internal compass or that, or even that internal structure, they need the external organization in order to be internally organized. And it's a, it's a crutch. It's a crutch. And look, I'll tell you something. I'm a, I'm a personal fan of crutches. I think, I think crutches are, I think coping is good. I think coping is fundamentally very good. I think every human being is coping in their own way. And I think crutches can be very powerful mechanisms for moving life forward. You know what I mean? There's motherfuckers who can't see who got to wear glasses. So be it. I think all forms of crutches, we're all using them in our own way. But it's it's important to understand that that it is a crutch. What, like, it depends on what the type of crutch it is, though. Because I've heard you also talking about the cope and how the cope becomes your nature eventually. Because, I mean, the cope mechanism is, you know, it, all, all, it's um, it's a, a self-defense mechanism that you develop over time, you know, because you need it to, basically, the, the pathological aspect to it. But all these people, bro, that are in, the, in that lane that you're talking about, I mean, I, I feel like this type of message that you talk about, uh, sadly, you're either going to get it or you don't. Because, I mean, that what, you, what you're saying, a lot of people are going to take it like, oh, like, is this motherfucker telling me to, like, just, just be a fucking mess? No, bro. Like, the, he's telling you to actually just focus on what matters exactly. and listen to your own nature. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. It's refreshing not to have a midwit up here. That is exactly correct. I'm not obviously telling people to purposely live in a fucking mess. The point of the matter is, is that you need to take a close examination of what you're finding achievement in. You know what I mean? The things that are giving you and, the things yeah. that are giving you the rush in life. Like, do you want to win or do you want to just be fucking neat and tidy and fucking pristine and immaculate? And look, that's what these fucking toy soldiers are all about. A lot of these health maxers, it's it's just toy soldier shit. It's building up these massive reservoirs of health and fucking energy, but they never they never use the energy. They don't expend it. You just store it up for year after year after year. Look, I'll tell you something. In my 20s, and I recommend this to all fucking dudes in their 20s. I got my eight hours a night. I got my three meals a day. I got my eight hours a night. I did eight hours of night asleep for fucking years. 
And I've been on the war path ever since because it came to a point where I was like, look, I just got 10 years in the bank. I'm super well rested. Let's go fucking spend all this fucking stored up pent up energy I have. Now I'm in my mid thirties, brother. I sleep three or four hours a night max. I'm never too tired to do a goddamn thing. The wheels are always running. I'm always fucking saying yes to things, doing shit, taking opportunities, making phone calls. I'm always fucking active. But biologically... Because you're actually excited. Sorry, bro, sorry. Well, because that's that's the... What people don't understand is that's the restoration cycle. The rest, the restoration <laughs> no, cycle no. It has that's nothing... Not. Yeah, go ahead. No, I'm so sorry, dude. I, I keep talking over you, bro. I'm sorry. I was going to say, like, the, no, the no, reason no, no. why, you're, you know... You're good. You're right? Yeah, I know the reason why you're able to like, you know, just go three, four hours of sleep and still be good is because you're actually excited to wake up and go get after the fucking mission, bro. It's the, like, it's the only answer to be happy uh, and to be fully fulfilled as a person is to have your mission. Like, and, and I see this uh, in a lot of my family members because I you also talked <laughs> about um, the fact that how the boomers, right? Like they got sold... Uh, on, on, um, on, you know, just having a job and, you know, just going that route and, you know, they're 50, 60 years old and they, they ain't got shit. They're just living, you know, way below av the average person. Uh, and so at that point, I mean, I don't, I don't know if, um, if it's their fault at that point, but, but like, I feel like at this point, like if you're, if you're, if you're choosing to go down that route, um, it's it's mostly your fault and i mean it, it's just an escape you know what i mean to actually not take the risk to actually not facts you fucking you fucking nailed it brother so what it is is it's a lot of young guys that are actually in retirement and they don't even realize they're living a retired lifestyle already and boomers are a great example of this too. I mean, boomers get so bored to tears in life. They get so bored after a while. They really got nothing going on. They stop challenging themselves mentally, physically. I mean, there's motherfuckers, dude, who will literally belabor themselves for hours about what color to paint the house. They'll go get a flywheel. They'll go get a color palette. And they will sit there and deliberate for hours. They'll go to the neighbor's house and ask for their opinion. They'll fucking call their nephew, ask his opinion. What color should I paint the fucking house? Should it be fuchsia? Should it be fucking sapphire? Like, what, 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 what do I fucking paint the shed? And, bro, it's like, who gives a fuck about any of this? Like, if, you, if I go to a store or I need something painted or something, brother, you put a color in front of me, it takes me a millisecond to just be like, all right, that's the one. Let's go. M move on. Paint it. Let's go. That's it. Clothing. Right, you're Close. and that's you're you're in that state of flow. You're in that state of flow, bro. Massively, you're in that state of flow. Massively, I go to a fucking store. I see a shirt I like. Boom, done. It's over. Like I don't sit there and fucking go. Oh, does this print looks this print this color? No, 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 bro. If I like it, I'm done. I'm out. I'm out yeah. the fucking doors. I'm flying. But there's motherfuckers, bro. You see this? You see how this manifests itself? There's people in the grocery store who will be in the grocery store with the shopping cart for like 45 minutes. And I, and I know what it is. I know where it's coming from. A lot of these people have been beaten down in life so bad. They hate coming home to their wife. They hate, they just have people breathe. They have people breathing down their neck and barking orders at them all day long. That when they get an opportunity to go to a store to go shopping, it's like a breath of fresh air. It's like, fuck, this is the only fucking window of time I have in my life where no one's going to tell me what to do. So they just go slow and they browse the aisles and they look at fucking the Cheerio box. Should I get Honey Nut Cheerios? Fucking like it's, it's just insane. And they use it as like a refuge. It becomes like a respite, like almost like an hour long vacation. And it just takes them an hour to get common ordinary things done whereas a guy like me i go to the store boom steak boom eggs done out the door Ten, like five minutes i'm i'm blazing through the fucking aisles I, I'm, I already have my purpose i already know what life's about go get your fucking groceries go get your shit and move on with your life but dude people make a fucking mission out of going to the store it's fucking crazy
And it's like, bro, no wonder you're broke. No wonder you've never fucking seen any real money. No wonder your your life is miserable. And that and that is the only part. I mean, that is the uh, that is the other part about it. Like what you said. Like they hate they hate going back to their. Because obviously, I mean, you can't like um, the way you do one thing is the way you do everything, right? Like at the end of the day, like if if I mean, <laughs> bro, it's crazy that the bro, way you. This is what I'm saying. It's like the guy knows deep down. He's like, fuck, I know when I get home, my wife's going to badger me that I, I have to deal she's, with this she's, shit. She's going yeah. to fucking badger me that I left my fucking shirt on outside on the patio. So he's like, I'm going to take another 45 minutes and maybe take a detour. Maybe I'll go to CVS and start looking at some plastic products. Maybe I'll fucking go get some fucking Pepto-Bismol, start looking at some medication. <laughs> Bro, this is what these guys are doing. And they don't even realize this is happening. Yeah. It's just they know when they get home, they're going to get chewed out. They have zero fucking power over their life. They know they're going to get fucking hammered. So they just fucking make a fucking fantastical mission over common, ordinary things that you should be doing anyway. And they glamorize it. They glamor. It's an escape. Yeah. It's a total fucking escape. It's a total fucking escape is what it is. It's an escape, bro. And I mean, obviously, you know, I'm in the process of learning and and I'll say, bro, like, it's crazy how, like, at a very turning point in my life, I came across your message and it, it is so crazy. Um, I mean, as I said, like, I'm still learning a lot of shit and I'm, and I'm still in the come up and um, I'm realizing, I mean, in my, in, you know, I'm, I'm not at that level where, you know, I'm married to a bitch I don't like. I, I'm very blessed to make money in a, in a way that, you know, it, it ties to my mission. Um, but um, it's just crazy how, um, I'm sorry if I lost my, kind of lost my turn of thought here. Um, no, okay. So basically like it's, 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 it's a, you know, this route of living by your, uh, you know, wearing your heart on your sleeve and fucking, leaning into your nature, like at the beginning, you know what I mean? If you're kind of like getting rid of all habits and getting rid of, of all a uh, fucking bullshit, um, mentality, it, it is a painful process. And it's obviously a lot easier to stay, you know, in a relationship you don't like in a job that, you know, you're, you're comfortable in because you're going to get beaten up at the beginning. Like you're going to have to sacrifice a lot, but at the end of the day, bro, like, I, and I, somebody asked you a question in a spaces, uh, 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 like a month ago or something, where like this guy was telling you, like, hey, like, I have two options, like, I'll either go like hyper normie way, or I just keep going, like, you know, I just took like a very gut wrenching shot, and I mean, bro, like, I've been in that situation like, I, like a lot of times, and like right now, a lot of things are starting to make a lot of sense. Um, you know, and, and it's, it's been a lot of pain, bro. Like it's been a lot of pain, uh, you know, the, the, the learning process, but I just, I could, I like, I kept picturing myself like, okay, like if I go the normie way, I know that when I'm fucking 50, when I'm fucking 60 years old, like I'm going to either fucking be in fucking jail, be a fucking alcoholic. Like I'm going to be miserable as fuck. And so, I mean, and that's why I said, like, right now there's so much knowledge out there and there are so many fucking options that if you decide to be a loser, it's completely Bro, on you. 100%. Like, think, about, think about the level of creativity you have to actually have to be a loser. It takes an outrageous amount of intelligence and creativity. That's crazy. Bro, it, it's so creative. The fact that these people got themselves in these pigeonholes and their, their life is where it's at, it took so much effort. You have to try so hard to lose in the modern world. You really have to fucking just be like a Picasso at this shit. Like these guys are just artists of losing. They are so clever Crazy. and creative at creating restrictions and levying impositions on themselves that are baffling. It's like these guys will find the craziest ways to put themselves in a fucking straitjacket. It's wild, bro. I, I, it's crazy, bro. I, it takes, I, by I, the way, I, that, it takes kinda, just that... as much creativity to make money as it does to get poor. The, the, like the, Dude, I was just going to... The amount of effort exerted <laughs> is truly the same. It is. And you got to be smart. Bro, I was just going to say smart like to be a loser too. People yeah. think losers are dumb. It's like no, no, no. They're very intelligently putting themselves in these horrible positions. It takes work. Yeah. Like 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 making that labyrinth. It takes bro like I was I guess you know I, I that, like a couple of days ago I saw this homeless guy and I was like this the same exact thought just came to me bro like it takes the same amount of energy to get there than to become a millionaire. 
Like, if you really think about it, bro, like, it takes the same amount it's of identical. energy. It's identical. Right? Mm -hmm. It's like shit. making yourself strong or making yourself weak. It's the same amount of energy. You just got to pick one. Exactly. Exactly. Dude, thanks a lot, bro. Like, I really appreciate you, yeah, I appreciate you, man. you, too. Yo, Reds. Yo, what's going what's on, bro? So you mentioned in the past that you think procrastination is a superpower. I'm wondering if you could explain that. And also, does that tie into this disdain for orderliness? At mm -hmm. all? For sure. Um, procrastination works really well if you're super overly ambitious and you like to try to like thread the needle and squeeze deadlines. Look. When there's a genuine desire to get something done in a certain amount of time, the genius comes out. And that's where kind of all innovation springs from in, in certain types of people. Certain types of people like to be ahead of the game. But look, there's a reason why the metaphor behind the eight ball exists, because there are a lot of high functioning motherfuckers who just like to constantly play behind the eight ball because then you got to do trick shots and you got to get really fucking creative and industrious. And they, they actually produce their best work. You know what I mean? At the, in the 12th hour. Um, but I do, but I do yeah. see procrastination as an ADHD, sort of like an offshoot kind of auxiliary trait of ADHD. And again, it's all about understanding how time condenses for winners. Like their winners are literally in a whole different fucking time zone than everybody else. Everyone thinks time is created equally. We all have 24 hours in a day to utilize. Absolutely fucking not the case because power and, and having those faculties really does sort of push the time scale. These guys are making things happen on a much faster rate and a much faster pace than anybody else. I don't know if you recall, but you want to talk about procrastination. I mean, look, the best path in life, in my opinion, is being extremely fucking direct about your intentions with everybody. Zero fucking concealment, zero concealment. And then things get sped up drastically. There's a, a lot of guys who literally have to have to dance and wear the feathered headdress and do the fucking rain dance. And they have to go through the courtship process with a woman for like six months to finally get a breakthrough. There's other motherfuckers who just literally walk up to a woman and declare their intentions right away and get it right there on the spot. Who's, who's in a different fucking time zone. So, yeah, so, no, so, so time is not created equally. What's so fucking ever. Got it. All right, man. I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you. Yo, Martel. Martel, you're up. All right, we'll slide over to...